Greetings, I'm Zachary Hepner. I'm pleased to share this Tvar Torah with you for Parshat Miketz. The most famous source for the requirement of at least 10 men for a minyan, or a quorum, is Midrash Rabbah 91. Vayavo b'nei Israel vishbor. The word Eida, congregation, is used in the pericope of Korach, that wicked congregation, and Eida is used to describe the judges who adjudicate a person who's committed manslaughter. The second opinion is Rabbi Shimon, who says that God is vishachanti betoch in the midst of Israel. And the word toch is used to describe the ten brothers of Joseph in Parshat Miketz, who went to Egypt, lishbor betoch, unison to search for their lost brother, Joseph. Ten brothers, ten Israelites are required to sanctify God's name. Parenthetically, or maybe directly related, the Midrash earlier observes from the extra words asara, mimash mashenem arache yosef, eni yodea shehem asara. Why does the Torah add the superfluous word asara, ten, to demonstrate that nine went to search for Joseph and only one of the brothers went food shopping? In other words, they were unified for a common cause. Commentators have observed and asked, why would such an important source of the minyan, where God's presence dwells, be related to a rebellious Korach and his rabble-rousers, or brothers who have engaged in kidnapping and attempted murder? Those are the choice sources. It's also interesting to note that the number 10, chosen by Avraham Avinu to save Sodom, is not one of the choices. Here is the Gemara in Psachim 47. The Talmud discusses how to properly roast the Korban Pesach, the Paschal Lamb, in a way that does not violate typical purity laws with respect to the skewer, the earthenware vessels, and the roasting process. The Mishnah teaches. How does one roast the Paschal Lamb? One brings a spit of pomegranate, and then one puts its legs and entrails inside it and roasts it all together. This is the statement of Rabbi, Yuzi, Rabbi Yossi Haglili. The Gemara then comments, Tanya Rabbi Shmuel Amer, Korehu Toch Toch. Rabbi Tarfur and Korehu Gedi Mikulas. The, teach, the Mishnah teaches that according to Rabbi Yossi Haglili, one places the legs and entrails inside the lamb's body and roasts them together. Rabbi Shmuel would call the Paschal lamb Toch Toch, because when one roasts the lamb, it makes that dripping sound. Rabbi Tarfon would call it, call it a helmeted kid, somewhat resembling a helmet. The sages then teach what kind of roasted lamb is prohibited to eat today. Any kid that one roasts all at once. There is a variant version of the text that Rabbi Shmuel did not call it toch toch, which is how it sounds, but tich bar, from the words toch Bar. This means stuffed. The hooves and entrails were stuffed into the animal in such a way that they were able to see it from outside. However, I think that a profound inclusion is taking place. The brothers begin their 200 year descent to Egypt. Whatever baggage they bring along, they descend to Egypt in unison. The brothers Betoch teaches us that as a minyan, the Almighty was with them. The Almighty will be with them in exile. As we, as we commem commemorate the Exodus annually, Rabbi Yishmael comments that our Paschal lamb has to sound like toch, toch, or tich, bar, or gedimikulas, helmeted. Either way, it represents unison. We leave Egypt in unison. Parenthetically, Toch bar resonates with the bar that the brothers went to get, which is food shopping. The Almighty has been with us all along during the entire dark journey. My Avi Mori adds that a righteous person is tocho kevoro. Rashi and Parsha Vayeshev says the brothers couldn't speak nicely to Joseph because as they were righteous brothers, their inside was like their outside or vice versa. Tocho Kevoro. How ironic their toch had turned out to be their redeeming quality. 
Wishing you a Shabbat Shalom for this Shabbat Hanukkah and Rosh Chodesh Tevet.